Hi, welcome to my new video on uh, speculative growth. Um, I'm going to follow a paper by Caballero and uh, co-authors. The main idea of this paper is, um, you know, trying to model an economy that doesn't follow the, you know, the typical dynamics, but rather one that, that has multiple steady states. One uh, that is the normal steady state, under which, um, you know, capital is low, and investment levels are pretty low. And then a speculative steady state, for which capital levels are really high and investment is really high. And in the paper, they want to study what drives an economy that moves from, um, you know, the way it normally is, to a phase of, um, of um, speculation that leads to um, some sort of speculative growth, in which investment is really high and growth is really high. And we see a huge boom in the economy. So to do this, they model an economy that is growing at a fixed rate, um, and then they derive, you know, a typical um, savings uh, function, which depends on the, on the income effects coming from uh, from the wages and the substitution effects coming from the from the interest rate, and that takes you to the usual law of motion in which you. Uh, your capital in the next period is going to be a, it's just going to be a function of that um, of those savings, and you can just back out um, the interest rate by the MPK and um, the wages by the marginal product of labor. So they argue that under very uh, general settings, um, this economy, this low motion, would look something like like this one with multiple steady states. But they want to make it tractable so that, um, you know, they can work with it easier. And uh, so they linearize it. And this is how it looks like after linearizing it. We still have an equilibrium here, which is uh, the normal equilibrium with low, uh, low levels of capital. And then we have a speculative um, equilibrium with really, really high levels of capital. And they argue that, you know, after linearizing, there is a tipping point. Um, from which, you know, the threshold, if you pass from this level of capital, you, you would see that speculation uh, happening, driving up investment. They just make savings uh, linear in, um, in capital and uh, in the interest rate, and they specify that this level of capital, um, you know, beyond which um, the economy has um, an exogenous saving shock, which is this delta here. So basically, if you pass this level of capital, which is this one here, if you pass this level of K0, you're going to see a huge, a huge um, increase in savings. The way they call it, they call this delta the growth uh, funding mechanism. It's a way to model that, um, you know, when you have high investment rates, you can also have really, really high savings. Because after you pass some, you know, some level of, of, of capital that you've been investing on, your, your savings rate, uh, rates will overshoot. But now they need a way for the economy to be able to get from this point past this point and um, for them the, the, the growth funding mechanism uh, to kick in. So the way they're going to model this uh, transition up to beyond this point is um, with what they call the capital gains uh, mechanism. The capital gains mechanism is a way to, um, to um, express that, you know, normally we assume that the price of capital is, uh, is just normalized to one. So uh, the MPK ends up being uh, um, exactly equal to the interest rate. But if we let the price of capital be different than one, and we let it change over time, then we will see that um, the return of investing in capital, which is just you know how much you paid for it at the beginning, uh, in the in the denominator and then the, in the numerator, how much you're going to get by selling it, plus how much is it going to produce for you in the future, that is going to equal um, the gross interest rate. So the MPK is not going to be equal to the to the interest rate anymore, because there's going to be fluctuations in the price of capital. So the way the this capital gains mechanism work is, you know, imagine that you suddenly become really, really optimistic 
about the price of capital in the future. You think it's going to go up by a lot in the future, so you really want to invest in capital because you're going to make tons of money in the future. So you invest um, a lot of money, a lot of savings into capital, um, and then you know usually the MPK would 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 go down in the next period. So you would want to invest less and go back to the to where you were before, right? Um, but what they say is, imagine that in this period, you also believe that in the next period, the capital is, is going to be going up. The price of capital is going to be going up. So you have the same reasoning. You say, look, I think in the future I'm going to be uh, richer if I sell capital. Well, I'm just going to invest tons of, um, of money into capital. And if this increase in prices uh, continues for, for a bit, um, it will give you enough incentives to uh, invest in enough um, capital so that you're actually able to um, go from here, keep investing, and pass beyond this point for the growth funding mechanism, the delta, to kick in. I will continue in the next video.